what's up YouTube, in this video I'll be showing you how to make my wooden house number 10, that's right we finally hit the big 1-0, the double digits. By the way, this house is a little bit weird, I'm not entirely sure how much you guys will like this, it might not be for everybody, you've been warned. If you want to make it, here's what you're going to need. You will need some spruce wood, and some birchwood planks, also grab some birchwood stairs, and finally, grab yourself some glass pane, and those are the only materials that we're going to be needing. Of course, if you want to do the interior and the exterior, you might need some other things like some lily pads, some leaves, some creeper heads, some pumpkins, you know, that sort of stuff. But really, all you need are these four materials that we have right here. So once you have these, and once you've figured out where you want to make it, I'll be making it right here. You're going to want to kick off your house with a row of six spruce wood coming directly up from the floor, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And once you have your row of a six spruce wood, this is what you want to do next. Take the sixth block that we have right here at the top of your row and go to the right of it by 12. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then connect this 12th block to the ground like this to give you a nice archway shape like that. Once you've formed your archway, this is what you want to do next. So, first of all, you just want to determine which side is going to be the front of your house. For instance, this is going to be the front side of my house, where I've just placed that birchwood plank. Once you've figured that out, come round to the back side of your house, take each one of the two corners of your archway, and extend each one of those corners back towards where the back of the house is going to be, each by 13. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and the other corner as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then you just want to connect each one of those 13th blocks together, and you also so want to connect them to the ground as well to give you a nice square shape or technically rectangular shape like this once you have that this is what you want to do next so come to the front of your house and come up to the upper left hand side of the front you're looking for this block right here right at the top of the framework very near the corner once you've located this block you want to place a single spruce wood directly on top of it from that spruce wood, you then want to do five upright diagonals with your spruce wood. So that's one, two, three, four, five. You then want to take this fifth upright diagonal and you want to connect it all the way back down to the framework like this to give you this shape, a triangular shape. Once you've formed that on the front of the house, you want to do the exact same thing on the back of the house. So come to the back of the house, take this equivalent block that we have on the back of the house, this one right here, go up on top of it by one with your spruce wood, and then do five up left diagonals. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then connect this fifth block all the way back down to the framework of the house just like this. And you know what? Whilst we're up here, we may as well fill in these little tiny triangular sections. So this is what you want to do to fill in these little tiny triangular sections. It's really easy. Underneath each one of these spruce wood diagonals that you placed, you want to place a birch wood plank. Then underneath the planks, you want to place spruce wood. And then in these tiny free spaces that we have in the corner of our triangle you just want to place glass pane and that is all you want to do so once you've done that to one of them you want to do the exact same thing to the other one and i wouldn't usually just randomly fill little pieces of the house in like this but we may as well do it now because well we're here why not why not do this so you want to have this pattern on both the fronts and the backs of your house. Very, very simple. So once you've done that to the front and the back triangle, this is what you want to do next. I suppose we may as well fill in the bottom portion of the house now. So first of all, to start this bottom portion of your house off to fill in all four of the walls, you want to do a horizontal row of spruce wood that basically just kind of like bisects your entire bottom half of your house basically so you just want to do a row of spruce wood that kind of just goes all the way around the middle of the bottom of your house if you guys can see what i've done there we've just taken that middle block and we've just done a row of spruce wood that just goes all the way around like that very simple 
What you then want to do on the front of your house here is you, you want to form this shape. You basically want to form like a little door shape in the center of the front of your house like that in that position. It should be pretty easy to eyeball it and you obviously just want to do that with like two rows of two spruce wood just left and right of the center space for the doorway. And once you've done that, you now want to take out your birch wood planks and you basically just want to do a row of birch wood planks just going all the way around the bottom of your house. So you just want to do a row of birch wood planks that basically just goes all the way around the bottom of your house just as I'm doing now. So you want to have something which should look like this. And that's why we just place the door there just, well, so we don't have to knock any blocks out later. Once you've done that to the bottom of your house, you now want to do the exact same thing at the top. You basically just want to do a row of birchwood planks that just goes all the way around the top of your house. All four walls just going all the way around the top of your house like this. And that will leave us only two rows to deal with. So once you've done that all the way around the house, you then want to take out your glass pane and you basically just want to fill in the two empty rows of all of the walls. You just want to go all the way around around and just fill everywhere else in with glass pane, excluding the door of course. We want to leave that empty, don't we? So you want to end up, and we're not finished yet actually, but you want to end up with something. Once we've actually finished this, I've started saying this too early and I'm not about to back out now, you'll want to end up with something. That should look, we're almost finished, we're getting there, that should look a little bit like this. Very, very simple pattern indeed. So, once you've got all of that taken care of, this is what we're going to do next. We're going to come all the way up to the second floor of the house, or the first floor, depending on what system you're used to, and you want to completely fill in the second floor of your house with whatever material you want to use for the floor. I'm personally going to be using birchwood planks because that's also the material that I'm going to be using for the balcony and I want the second floor and the balcony to use the same materials so that's why I'm using that. However, of course, you can use whatever you want if you much prefer, I don't know, black stained clay or you prefer to use glowstone, whatever you want to use, that's of course fine, that's up to you. However, I'm going to be using the birchwood planks and I've almost completely filled in the second floor. and there we go. So once you've filled in the second floor of your house, this is what you're going to want to do next. So we now want to connect the triangular shapes that we made quite a bit earlier together. Just connect the front of the house all the way over to the back of the house with a row of spruce wood that should look exactly like that. Pretty simple. Once you've done that, we're now going to fill in this rectangular shape that we have here. And what this rectangular shape is, it's basically just an entrance onto the balcony. So the way that I'm going to do this, I'm just going to fill this shape in. And then I'm just going to show you guys what it should look like because that is going to be the easiest way. But the first thing that we're going to do is just make an archway of glass pane that kind of just goes all the way around the inside of the spruce wood rectangular shape that we've just made then we add a archway of birchwood planks and then we just add in the entrance shape which is going to just look a little bit like this you see why i don't try and explain these things guys it it slows things down and it doesn't make too much sense so i'm just going to do this and i've just about finished it already so this is what you want to have for the entrance onto your balcony. It's really, really simple. Like I said, you start with an archway of glass, then an archway of birchwood planks, and then you just have to put in your various spruce wood and your various glass panes, and that is what you want to end up with. So pause the video here, apply everything that you see there, and once you've got that taken care of, we can now move on to the next bit. So we're now just going to do, actually, you know what, whilst we're here, again, just because we're here, why don't we just add the little safety glass that we're going to have around the balcony which is just which is just this just add a layer of glass pane that kind of just traces along the top of the framework of the house and it just serves as a little protector nobody wants to fall off of there that'd be highly embarrassing trust me i know once you've done that we're now going to take care of the roof of the house so the roof of the house is very very simple Come to the left side of the house, the roof starts basically in line with the top of the framework of the house. And you just want to run many, many rows of birchwood stairs 
all the way across your house, just kind of like tracing along the outside of the triangular shapes that we made earlier until you eventually end up with a roof shape. So I'm just going to do that. I don't think it really requires any more explanation. I'm pretty sure that you guys can figure out how to do this roof. It's, it's pretty simple. But I'm going to be showing you where it should be in just a second once I've just completed this final row. So what you want to end up with is something from a front view that should look exactly like that. Pretty ugly, right? <laughs> yeah, I know it is. Don't worry, we're going to be solving that problem. So once you've added that first layer of stairs, the main part of the roof, all the way up on top of your triangular shape, you then, to make it look a little bit better, want to add an overhanging layer of spruce wood stairs, what are they? They're not spruce wood, they're birch wood stairs, getting confused here. You just want to add an overhanging layer of birch wood stairs in front of your house, just hanging over by one block like that, and then you want to place upside down stairs underneath the overhanging layer. And of course, once you've done that on the front, you also want to do the same thing on the back. So coming to the back here, we're just gonna be doing the exact same thing. We're just going to be placing the birch wood stairs that overhangs the back of the house by one and then upside down stairs everywhere else. Pretty standard roofing practices. So once you've done that on the front and now the back of the house, we can now move on to the final part of this. So the last thing that we have to do in terms of the structure of the house, since it's looking a little bit plain at the moment, isn't it guys? It's looking, it's looking a little bit plain. I think we can both admit that. That's good because we now have like a little entrance porch sort of thing just to add on the front of the house. This is where we have to add it and I just have to bring up my plans for this because I can't see. So this is what you want to do. Starting from this position, can you guys see the block that I have highlighted right here? I really can't give you any better instructions. This this block that I have right here, from this position, you want to do a row of four spruce wood coming out of the front of your house. So from here, one, two, three, four. And you want to do the exact same thing just on the other side of the house here. So from this block, just three blocks away from the right, one, two, three, four. Then connect those fourth blocks together like this and connect each one of those fourth blocks to the ground exactly like that. You may also want to change the direction that the spruce wood is facing just to make it a little bit more appealing. That's a personal thing that I have. You might not have the same problem. Once you've done that, you then want to place two spruce wood in these positions right here. Then place a glass pane in between them and then place a spruce wood on top of the glass pane so we now have a mini triangular shape. Can you guys see what's going to be coming next? I bet you can. We're now going to give this little porch outline, this little porch framework, a roof. So we're now, just as we did with the main roof of the house, we're just adding in, if we can actually position ourselves properly, we're just adding in the little mini roof that sits on top of the porch, just like this, very, very simple. So what you want to end up with is something that should look, and I'm just also doing the little niceties on it as well, I'm also making sure that the stairs overhang by one row and that we have the upside down stairs just to make the roof look a little bit better. So what you want to end up with is something that should look a little bit like that. And if you want to get a little crazy, you don't even have to use planks on the top. You could use yourself some regular old spruce wood if we can get to place the right way. We might have to do it like this. There we go. Uh, you might even want to use spruce wood on the top like that. You might like that a lot better. If you like that, you may also want to grab yourself some, uh, where are we, some birchwood slabs. You might want to add a layer of birchwood slabs on top like that. If you like, again, that's up to you. Kind of your choice. But once you've done the porch, and I hope that I've not done that too quickly, but I think it is really, really simple. That's, that's why I've allowed myself to do it too quickly. I don't like those slabs. Those can go. Um, but what you want to end up with is something that should look from a front view exactly Exactly like this and if you want again you can make it you can make it look a, a little bit nicer if you like you could connect it to the house like this and this sort of pattern like this just make it look ever so slightly nicer if you wanted to you could even grab yourself some where are they I cannot find things these days you might want to grab yourself some fence maybe that would look a, a little nicer if we connect that to the front there and put some on the sides. I can't move like that. 
that's unfortunate, apparently I can't jump over fencing even though I am floating. You might want to make it look a, a little bit nicer, but that's up to you. You might even want to light up the top of this. Maybe you want to grab yourself some glowstone. Maybe you want to put some underneath the porch. I'm just spitballing here. I didn't do this on my original house. You might want to have that all nice and lit up. You might want to have a cool little effect like that. Maybe you want to see the glowstone. Who knows? But that's all up to you. So this is what your house wants to look like once it's been 100% fully completed. And just like I said at the start of this video, I'm not entirely sure whether you guys will like this house. It's a pretty simple design, but I've... I, I can't remember seeing a house that looks... Oh, something else you might want to do, by the way, guys. You might want to make sure that your spruce wood faces the right way. If you're anything like me, you might not want to have the spruce wood showing around the house, but that's kind of up to you. Have I got all of it? Anyway, I'll, I'll talk and uh, sort it out. I've, I've not really seen another house that kind of looks like this, kind of like a half house, like half roof, half balcony. Maybe I'm being a little crazy, maybe maybe it's just so obvious and I've just wiped it from my memory that I've not seen any houses like this, but you know, when, I, when I've been looking around for houses, kind of just like thinking of ideas, I, I've never seen anything that's kind of like the half house like this, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just being a little narcissistic and crazy. I might be. I'm not saying that I, uh, I invented this or anything, but hopefully you guys like this. And what I'm now going to do, I've realized I'm talking a lot. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to whisk away. I'm going to mess about with the outside and the inside just a tiny bit. There's not much to be done to the inside. And I'm going to show you guys what it will look like with a garden, stuff like that. Nice bit of... Nice bit of interior, bit of exterior. So I'll be back in just a second once I've messed about with the house ever so slightly. Not too much. Not too much. Alright guys, so as you can see, I have tampered with the house just a little bit. Let's take a look, shall we? We will start with the interior as I have done the least amount of work to the inside of the house. So the first thing that I did was rip up the original floor, replaced it with black stained clay. I haven't used it as a flooring material for a while. I've been using wood. I'm not entirely sure why. So we've returned to the based black stained clay, my favorite material of all time. Also added in a staircase. That's pretty much the only thing I've done to the interior. There's not too much more to do other than that. Of course, I could make it look nice, but why would I want to do that? I, I don't like doing interiors. Kind of a limited amount of options with the staircase by the way guys you you really can't take that many liberties with it i mean i would place it either like this side of the house or i would place it like on the front of the house so you'd be like walking up this way like coming downstairs i would either have it like in the position that i have it or i'd have it the opposite way so you're like you're walking up that way i don't think that it would particularly work in any other way just because of how many how many spaces you have to knock out so you can actually walk up it i mean I, I guess you might be able to just fit it just somewhere else, but I mean, the obvious choices are where I have it or the opposite way around. Um, it didn't do anything to the interior other than that, really didn't. Ripped up the floor, put in a staircase, that's it. Uh, I added a couple of potted plants to the balcony. Why? Because I wanted a little bit of colour. That's why, guys. I don't know why. I was feeling like a gardener. What can I say? Let's take a look at the outside and... Again, not really done anything special. This is very minimal effort, but it does make a world of difference. As you guys can see, got a pretty weird, funky view here. As you guys can see, all I've done is pretty much add a path around the house, added flowers everywhere, added a hedge which goes all the way around the house, and it connects to the porch, which I quite like. Um, that is actually jungle leaves for the hedge, and underneath those jungle leaves, is actually black stained clay if you guys can see underneath there I placed black stained clay then I placed the hedging and what you will end up with if you guys want to copy this and of course furnish the house a little bit more you guys if you want to use this for an actual house you know you'd get chess in there and such and paintings and all that but what you want to end up with eventually if you copy this is something that should look exactly like this and it it looks pretty nice especially considering how much effort the house actually takes to make it so it's a very very simple easy build shouldn't take you too much time whatsoever pretty cool design roomy enough could probably use it as a survival house it'd probably work quite well and again it's it's not difficult to make there's no difficult patternings or anything to put on it so hopefully you guys like this thanks for watching guys and i will see you in the next video i'm not sure what sort of house i'll be doing next time i might be doing actually i i might be trying another spongebob house but keep that keep that to yourself Shh. I might be trying the chum bucket again. I'm trying the chum bucket again. I might, I, I've been putting some effort into it and I think I might almost be ready with that. It's been a long time coming, but I think I might finally, 
finally be able to make the chum bucket. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.